Warthog inbound. Warthog? <laughs> Damn, what the hell is that? Warthog. Warthog. Wow. They're nasty. Blinded for like a minute. Jesus. God damn it. Can I fucking Oh my god. This guy is fucking raping him. Damn, dude. Look at the blues. 43 and 10. Wow, good shit. Yeah, dude, What's up, YouTube? It is Sploosh here, and I'm bringing my first official Black Ops 2 commentary. I have tons and tons to say to you guys, but there's no way I'm going to fit it all in this video. So if you're interested or like what you hear in this video, please feel free to subscribe. There will be more content. There always is more content coming. I want to start this video with a disclaimer, and I feel like everyone that makes Call of Duty videos should always start with this. I am strictly talking about 6 vs 6 gameplay and playing solo. Not to say that anything I do doesn't work in Ground Wars or with a full party, but if I was playing Ground Wars or a full party, I would probably play completely differently. So just keep that in mind. The kill streaks that I use are not going to be for everyone, but I'll try to offer some alternatives. And the guns I use and the way I use the guns are not going to be for everybody because I have my own style. The reason I haven't made a video about Call of Duty is because I wanted to take my time and let my thoughts settle. I will tell you openly that the first few days of playing Call of Duty I was screaming, I was upset, I was thinking this game sucks, why is it so laggy, the netcode is horrible. But recently I feel like the netcode's better, I feel like I understand the game, and I feel like I chiseled away the rust that came from not playing any Call of Duty since January. Which is quite a long time, it's almost a year from away. And you know, you always think, oh, I can handle it. I, I can, I can be good at these games. I have, I was good once. You know, I had a 3.4 KD in uh, Modern Warfare 3. So why can't I do well in Black Ops 2? But unfortunately, it hadn't worked out so easily for me. And now I can say that I'm actually enjoying the game, and it could potentially be my favorite Call of Duty of all time. And I le I say that knowing that it's pretty much guaranteed that Treyarch will change a few things. I already heard that they're gonna move a B flag in domination on that silly Jurassic Park looking map. I forget that. I think it's a drone. I don't want to talk much about perks, but I did flash you the AN-94. That is my sort of pet gun right now. It's sort of my favorite. If I had to pick a gun right now, I'd definitely say the AN-94 is on the top of my list, and then probably some submachine guns would follow below that. And that's why this gun's really inspired me to make the video. And so let me just go over the uh, perks real quick. I hate to reference competitive play, but let's be honest. What the pros are doing has huge relevance to what you should be doing. It just is what it is. Now, for a while there was UAVs in competitive play, so everybody used Ghost. They took the UAVs out, so everyone started using Flak Jacket. Well, there's UAVs in pubs, so you're going to want Ghost and you're going to want Flak Jacket. It's the bottom line. The scavenger perk, not popular in competitive play, but mostly because getting grenades, not that important because everyone's flak jacketing. And also, you're expecting to die. In a pub, you're hoping to live. So, in my opinion, if you can run out of bullets frequently, then go for scavenger. And then, lastly, you got tactical mask, extremely popular. I honestly cannot imagine why anyone wouldn't use tactical mask with all the shock craziness going on. I find... Every time you kill somebody using shock charges, it feels really good. I mean, come on, right? I've chosen, it's hard, but I've chosen not to use C4 or Claymores to do this kit. But I feel like it's worth it because extended mags is always going to be the ideal use it, uh, item or whatever you want to call it used by really good players. And the reason is because you always are hoping for that kind of mega you know kill where you're gonna get not just a double not maybe not even a triple but you're looking for that quad stock is a item that I I mean it's stalker the stock stalker I kinda actually that's funny but the stock is something that when I played Modern Warfare 3 stalker was pretty much on every single class I ever used except for a shotgun class and 
I just play with a really high sensitivity. A lot of people aren't going to be able to duplicate what I do, but if you're not going to be using the stock, then I would definitely recommend the laser sight. Some people just feel more comfortable hip firing. However, I will say that you're going to pretty much always win a close range fight if you're ADSing, and the stock allows you to pretty much be ADSing in all conflicts, so it's up to you. I'm not even going to mention the silencer because I feel like it's self-explanatory. The point um, that I want to bring up is my feelings about assault rifles. It's probably some kind of COD brainwashing or whatnot, but I feel this need to always have a assault rifle class. And I think a lot of people have been suckered into the obsession over submachine guns. And I could go on and on about the game's balance and how submachine guns and how assault rifles and sniper rifles and I guess shotguns, how they all kind of blend together to form some kind of game balance. But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to talk about is assault rifles. I would rank the AN-94 as my number one favorite assault rifle, and I don't think there's any assault rifle even close to it, unless you really twisted my arm, and then I might say the M8. But moving on, I, I if you had to rank my favorite guns, you got AN-94 right now, and then all submachine guns. It's, it's tough for assault rifles right now. It really is. But the reason the gun's good, though, is that it has an absurd range on it. Like, it's almost like sniper rifle range as far as damage drop. So you're going to get those three-shot or four-shot kills from really crazy ranges. Like, practically, I almost want to say double all the other assault rifles. And, like, God, I couldn't even calculate over submachine guns. But it's, you know, submachine gun, to be bottom line, is you're probably killing in, like, five or six bullets most of the time. If you're shooting at any range at all where this gun is much lower than that and the slow rate of fire isn't too bad considering what I just told you and also you know if you've ever used a scorpion evo yeah that thing's got like 32 bullets but that's pretty much two kills and that's if you're doing really well with your aim so you have to keep in mind rate of fire will win you sort of like a panic moment but it's not gonna work out for you overall if you're pushing a spawn and trying to take out like four guys at once which kind of rolls into why you have the extended mag and I feel like the extended mag will save my life frequently and I'll always take an extended mag over a faster reload because in theory if you can't kill people with 40 bullets with a gun at a slow rate of fire like the AN-94 you're probably doing something wrong. Everything I've just said to you should remind you of the ACR from Modern Warfare 3 which was the best gun in the game. It had an absurd ability to kill at distance but also was pretty effective up close and this allows you to navigate a map completely differently than with a submachine gun and I've just found personally that it's not about a gun being the best at any one thing it's about a gun being good at everything and that's what this gun provides i do also want to briefly talk about my kill streaks i'm very excited about them i use the stealth helicopter the orbital vsat aka blackbird and the warthog which my friend calls the angry yak so i had to google yak to see what that sounds like <laughs> Yeah, and I just get a hard on pretty much every time I use this Warthog. It sounds so beast. Uh, I do. I think it's best for 6v6 because it's good for objectives and you don't have the ground war amount of people to try to kill. But I will say that the idea of an orbital VSAT is to create some kind of kill streak loop where you get kill streaks and then those kill streaks help help you get the kill streaks again. And I feel like at this point, this is the sweet spot of kill streaks. It's not too high and it's not too low and you know for some people you might want to not use a warhog but use like a sentry gun or the airstrike and that's fine i am running out of time so i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching and stay tuned for more